So, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Hartwood Turning at the Stable Studios. I hope you've had a good start to your day. Um, I've been watching as well. Two really nice demos there from JP and uh, Steve. I hope I can emulate and be as ex just as successful. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so today, um, I've got some earworms to help me along. I'll just bring them on the screen here, and you can uh, they can introduce. Well, I'll introduce them because you never know what they're going to say. So here we have Terry from DJ Turning. Morning. We have Joe Senior, and Morning. we have Mark, the gentleman wood turner. Howdy. So I'm going to pop these guys back in the background because they're uh, going to bully me all day today. I know, rightly. Oh, oh, that's the right one. I nearly, I nearly uh, removed myself again. I'm good at that. I've done that a time or two. So today, guys, we're going to turn a piece of ash, which I've already got mounted on the uh, on the lathe. I'm going to make a small vase, so there will be some turning on the outside, some burning, some um, embellishing wax, and then we'll hollow out the inside and uh, finish the vase off then. So I'll crack on with that. And I'm going to let Mark uh, sort out who's in the chat there and uh, introduce us to everybody. So, on we go. Right. Okay, from the participants list then. So far, we've got Barry's Wood Creations, Ben Jamin, Chris Dodds, Duncan the Curly Turner, Emma, Mom of Dragons, Fred Gilliver, Hodgepodge Woodworks, Ian the Monkey Hanger Turner, Costas Anarchus, Defteros, Chris Schwend, Leaping Lemur Craftworks, Dale from Maple Tree Studios, Mr. Stacy Smith, Rich the Beard 16, Wondai Craftsman, Vicky Jenkinson, Wivy Woodshed, um, Ben Jamin, and that's it for my list, but I know there's loads more in. Circular yeah. Wood by Keith. Greg Gilliver, Mr. Stacy Smith, CJ's Hobbies, Peter Corcoran, Silvana, the non-crafting crafter. Music Welcome, guys. When? Lawrence Pagigia. Yes, Lawrence Pagigia. Yeah, I'd said uh, Schwind. Silvana, the non-crafting crafter. Here are the French so turners in, design and makes in. Welcome along, everybody. Welcome to Brian's studio. Welcome to his live. So good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming in. So I'm just starting off the shape, shaping this piece with uh, a spindle roughing gouge. Seeing how good a finish I can achieve with that. That's sometimes as good as a skew. Michael McEwen's in and Michelle Oosby's in. Oh, hi, Michelle. Michelle, for who, uh, for everybody who doesn't know, is my wife. Good morning, hi, Michelle. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. I mean, Chris Glanville's in. Hi, Chris. Christopher. Vicky Jenkinson's in. I'm just going to roll the top edge of this over a little bit. Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft is in, so that'll be Wayne and his... Wayne and Valerie. Outstanding and beautiful Valerie. wife, Valerie. Hello. We'll just have a quick look at that, guys, and see what that looks like. Who apparently is watching on the big screen. Valerie's in her big television. Do one more cut because that's a bit, uh, there's a lot of bit tear right there. And I don't want to be sanding forever. Rex B's in. Hi, Rex. Good morning, Rex. This, this is a very Hi, open Rex. piece of grain timber, or open grain timber, should I say. So we might get some tear away anyway, but I'm hoping we've kind of sorted that a little bit. Let's have a look. Don't forget, everybody, if uh, you need to ask a question, would you please prefix your question with a couple, two or three question marks so we can pick them out of the chat. And if you haven't already subscribed, Brian, we'd love you to subscribe if you like what you see. And I didn't you miss you, Silv Sorry. I didn't miss you, Silvana. I read your name out earlier. Ooh. So did yeah. I. Silvana, you need Watch to uh, wake up, Silvana. Wake up, Silvana. 
Don't forget, well, folks, if, if you like what Brian's doing, make sure to click the thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to his channel and hit the notification bell so whenever Brian puts any content up on his channel, it shows up in front of you. Sorry, Brian, off you go. So that, that's the basic outside shape there, guys. That's all I want to do with it. And I'm now going to, it, there is a lot of material in the grain here, but because I'm going to use, um, um, tor I'm going to use the torch on this, some of that will burn off anyway, and we'll see how that looks. I'm just going to put my uh, power hood on now. I'll just let you see and make sure my microphone comes out. So I use a GSP power hood, just let you see it there, and then back to close up. So I'm just going to sand it a little first before we burn it. Quick question for you, Brian from Rex B. Yep. When when you did the last cut with the spindle roughing gouge, your thumb was in the V. Does that get lots of heat? No. Um, if you're not doing, if it's not an aggressive cut, you don't need to. You're not going to generate a lot of heat. So there was no heat in the in the tool at all, to be honest. It's a piece of ash. If, if you were turning a lot and been using it for a while, it would heat up. But um, I've only been using it for five minutes. So. Emma Mum Dragon is asking you a question. She wonders what the wood is because uh, she's only. She didn't Hi, Emma, hear she think, uh, sorry, the wood is a piece of ash, which is not quite dry. Hence the reason I've got some cracks on it. I'll just show you them in a second. It's not a hundred percent dry. So this buzz, if I if, if I made it too thin, it would probably warp and split. But there's a little crack down here, two little cracks just right down at the bottom here. Show you overhead there. Two little cracks down here, which I've stabilized with super glue. And there's one just at the top there. Again, stabilized with super glue. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Lewis the Klondike Craftsman is asking Brian where there will be a signature series of smocks like the one that we are uh, that we can all buy no there won't this, uh, this smock guys was uh, made for me by my sister who is a, who's a, who's a shop a crafter she does um, smock. what do you call that she does quilting she makes fancy quilts and all sorts of other um, things from scrap material. I asked her to make me a smock. This was the material she had to hand. I'll just show you again. So this was the material she had to hand. Uh, it's a nice lime green colour. And it has little uh, tulips on it. There will be more. So she sent me this one just, as a, just to get the size right. Change your camera. Change camera. Oh, change camera again. Sorry, guys. Back to the Rex, overhead. Rex B says that's the cleanest shop he's seen. Oh, thanks, Rex. <laughs> uh, I, have a, I have a little bit of a problem, Rex. That every time I finish turning, I have to clean up. Even if I'm doing two pieces, I clean up between pieces. That's a bit weird, I know, but sure. That's not OCD, of course, Brian. No, not, not one bit OCD, no. Chris Dodd says, Brian, do you have a house elf to clean your workshop? Do I have a, a house elf? No. No, just me. Michelle's, Michelle's good, but she doesn't, she doesn't uh, go as far as clean the workshop. I thought you were going to say she doesn't do it good enough. But anyway. Yeah, I thought no. that as well. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't dare. Ian the Monkey Hanger Turner says, that smock makes you look like a jockey. Oh, thanks very much. Excellent. And Rich from mean. Beard 16 says he thinks the smock is cool. Yeah, we Good. all do. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, I must admit, I'm quite taken with that. It's a bit yeah, different from the norm. You can, you can well, look forward to, uh, if you subscribe to my channel, guys, you can look forward to some uh, even more outlandish um, smocks. Maybe even a giveaway. My sister has not. promised to uh, make me some strange material smocks. So Robert, from Hodgepodge, okay. Robert from Hodgepodge Woodwork says you need matching trousers as well. Uh, no, I don't. No, this is wood. This is wood turning, guys, not golf. 
<laughs> so I think that's probably enough, Sandy. Well, maybe not. Maybe just a little bit down here. No, that'll be okay. So now, um, you guys need to make a choice of which color we're going to use some embellishing wax so you guys need to make a choice of which color you want to choose type like it in the chat now people type it in the chat so you've got purple black i'll just read them <clears throat> purple black gold bronze blue white green or silver so there are the uh hampshire soon embellishing waxes so now because i'm burning this bronze. i need to clean the workshop a little bit Bronze, pink and purple, 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 Butane and propane mix gas the extractors off. I have an escape route to my right. I have a fire extinguisher just off to the right, and I've cleaned the lathe bed from any uh, shavings, and the floor's pretty clean too. So, so you're really confident. <laughs> so I'm pretty confident uh, I can escape if this goes on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so we we'll just give this a. Uh, we're not going to overly burn it. Uh, this this process is called. Shoshogi ban? Is that how you say it? Yeah. Shoshogi ban? Mm -hmm. It's a Japanese principle of burning wood to preserve it. <laughs> Most of them they are saying purple, Brian. Most of them are saying purple. purple. That's so okay. Barry like purple the, too. Barry's yeah. wood creation suggested green to match your smock, but he's the only one that said green, so there we are. Well, I suppose we could, do purple, we could do purple and green. Michelle said she's standing by with a hose. Yeah. Good girl, <laughs> Michelle. She'll just be outside the door then, because that's exactly where the hose is. <laughs> Wood wizardry by Colin says, Brian, your sister should go into business making custom think... turning smocks um, and should I, make I, a mint. I kind of think she's hiding in the background. She doesn't really, she won't come on the, on the chat. I don't think she's hiding in the background, so she'll know. Brian's sister, I'd, you could I'd, come I'd, in I'd the chat. For sure. Yeah, so would I. You can come in the chat, Brian's sister, and you can give us a price and we can all order one now. You'll be working for the next seven months. Or even say whether you'd be willing to do it. Yeah, whether you say you'll do oh, it. Well, yeah, I, even she, think about it. Or... She, she, she'd be a bit shy, I would think. All right, just say hello. Well, at least I hope she's that. looking in the background, because if she's not, there's going to be a real snot on me all this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> It's really Lewis, Klondike, Lewis Klondike says that that might be the most even burn he's ever seen. Oh, thanks, well Lewis. Done. You haven't just, been practicing, Brian. A couple of little bits there. No, I haven't, I, haven't done, I haven't done one practice at all. I've done seven. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. Looking great. That's the little burn done, guys. And I'm just going to sand this back again to, I forgot what that is, 240. I need to put this hood back on. Hope you can still hear me now. I've got the hood back on. I can bring up my extractor again. Wood Quickly give this a by, sand back. Wood Wizardry by Colin says a lovely grain pattern. Yeah, I tend to it agree. Is, it is. It is a gorgeous piece of wood, to be honest. Um, just out the edge of a, a, a nice tree that fell down in a friend's garden. And uh, they phoned me up to say, would you like some? I said, yeah, if you can cut it into 10 mil slices, that would be great. <laughs> or 10 inch slices, that would be great. Because 10 inches is what goes through my bandsaw. And they, they duly did that and sealed the ends and everything for me. So that's Leslie and Rich if they're uh, if they're anywhere and watching. Um, from Antrim. They have loads of trees, so hopefully we can keep in touch with them and get and get uh, some more wood as and when. It does, it does help if you know somebody. 
that can provide wood. Wood well, does. Um, that's, that's wood's quite expensive. To, shop to buy it all the time. So I think that's good there, guys. We'll call that good. And now we need some, um, we're going to use some Yorkshire grit, so. Uh, so we'll need some sanding sealer first. Right, there's the link, folks, for the virtuallycrafty.com website, which will take you to the YouTube channel, where you can go onto the playlist, press playlist, and it'll automatically transfer from one maker to the next throughout the day, so you don't have to go searching. You can catch everybody's content, like and subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, so that way any future craft festivals, you'll be all lined up, ready to go, Thanks to Dale from Maple Tree Studios for organizing that. And thanks to JP and Carl for initially setting up the entire craft festival. Yep, for huge us all thanks to, be to entertained. them. Huge thanks to them. Who's singing? Uh, well, this, this uh, well, I, I said in Steve's there, I kind of commented in Steve's uh, when Mark sang in Steve's, I thought we might have a three part harmony. Oh. What, what chance? Oh, what chances of that happening? Do you actually think they've been? So, so, in so any we have kind Mark, of Mark, the gentleman Wood with his, I, with his, with his yeah. uh, sexy husky cones. We have Joe oh, with her kind of almost soprano voice, and we have Welsh Terry with his, uh, his with his, uh, Devonshire with his Terry. sort of <laughs> sorry, Devonshire Terry <laughs> with his with his dulcet tones as well. So I'm sure between the three of them, we could manage a little uh, rendition Ricky. of. Vicky Jenkins and is asking is asking, I must know what are pants there? Well pants, Vicky, here are underwear, but oh, yeah. pants <laughs> that you refer to is we call trousers. We wear pants under our trousers. Yes. That's correct. And, and that's how it should be. Um, You're not singing, Joe. Uh, uh, right, not singing well, yet. Not, not ready yet. Are you I'm not, not ready, ready yet? Okay, you tell Wait, me. Oh, where's that? I need to leave that lid there so you can see that. Partly, uh, it, your cigarette doesn't work unless you leave the lid there and show it on camera. So, Heidi from Whitehall right. Pottery's in. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Hi Heidi. Heidi. Hi, Heidi. So, hello again to everybody in the chat. Right, Joe, you can go now. Hands that feel pity can be soft as your face. With light brown, you're too gritty. Oh, excellent, Joe, excellent. Oh, well done, Joe. That, that'll Good give turn, me Mark. some subscribers, that's amazing. Good turn, Mark. No, I'm not singing I think, it. Uh, I think, JP I think, Woodworks in. Hi, JP. Oh, hi, hi JP. JP. Morning to Jennifer, you, Sarah. Jennifer Crafton Creations is in as well. I just, hi, I just, I just have, a qu I have a question to ask you. Has JP Jennifer. got a spanner? No, he hasn't. Yeah, no, he hasn't. Paul Findlay is in. Could Morning, I just Paul. fix that? For a second, yep. JP's, supposed to, JP's supposed to have a spanner. Just give me a second, guys. So yeah, David Heath is in. JP. Good morning, David. JP, I've if put the like. link in already once, but if you could add it whenever you want to, mate, as yeah. soon as Brian gives you a spanner. I think that should be it now. You can just try that out, uh, Jamie, and see if that's working okay. Morning, David Beamish. Is in. Beamish. Steve Cassidy Thank says his wife didn't in. touch the volume that time. Well done. Oh, <laughs> excellent. I won't, take that. I won't take that personal. She probably didn't reach it in time. She probably didn't reach it in time. Get a clean piece of cloth. So if you like what Brian's doing, if you want to click the thumbs up, um, if you want to subscribe to his channel and uh, set the, uh, is it the alarm bell? For notifications, yes, um, it'd be greatly appreciated. It will indeed, guys. I'd be delighted to have some more subscribers. Pete from Twisted Trees is in. Hi, Pete. Say Morning, sorry, Pete. Right. Hi, Pete. He had to stop and have a coffee. Yeah, you were just right, Pete. Just to advise you, Brian, there's 76 people watching at the moment. Oh my goodness, that's more than I've ever had. And you've been going for 20 minutes. So, I'm all perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It's the smock. Let's have a little look at that. Yeah, green refraction. So there you go, guys. Gone. That's a nice piece of wood. Now, 
What colour did we go for? Purple. Purple. Well, I think we did. Clear winner. That was a cons consensus. <laughs> Everybody wanted purple except the cup. Cool. Purple it is. Whoa, purple is how purple color. that is, Joe. Joe has wow. a punch on for purple. Well, it's pink. We'll just... It's pink that I like, but I wasn't allowed oh, pink right. in the car, so it's actually oh. purple. Jigsy sheds in. Good morning, Jigsy. Hi, Jigsy. Thanks Hi, Jigsy. for coming in. And thanks to everybody Hi, for coming in. I haven't said hello to all 70, whatever there is of you. 79. But, uh, 79 people. Boy, that's climbing up towards 80. Bye. Your maths are getting better, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Ian, Ian the monkey yeah. hanger turner says he's just subscribed. Thank you well, very, thank much. You very much. Thank you very much, Ian. Appreciate that. My subscriptions this morning were at 311. Well done, you. For those of you sure. that don't know, Brian has only been turning for about a year and uh, he's coming along beautifully. He's got some real good skills. Thanks, Mark. Malcolm Appreciate that. Malcolm, Malcolm Douglas has just joined. Morning, Malcolm. Hi, Malcolm. Well, there we are. I'll just let that dry off for a little bit. Let some of the uh, solvents that's in that evaporate a little bit. Brian, got a special request. Could you say hello to Jennifer Stoughton and wish her a happy birthday? Oh, Jennifer Stoughton. we got to sing that, Mark, and we? Jennifer Stoughton. Happy birthday, girl. I hope you have many, many more. And Mark looks after you. I hope you got breakfast in bed. Happy birthday, girl. There we go. That's that done. Vicky, we'd Jennifer. like to know, uh, would, wouldn't, it, wouldn't the colour go on better before the waxing? Now, this is a this is a, a debate I had as well. I asked that question. If you just put it on, if you put the sanding sealer on just to seal the, the wood a bit, um, yes, the wax would go in further. So the beeswax that's in the the, um, the Yorkshire grit will fill up the grain a little bit. Um, so you can get a deeper color, uh, deeper into the grain uh, by not using the Yorkshire grit. But it's that good a, uh, you'll see in a minute, guys, because it, it actually still will, so the, the wax is coming off there, it's just the stuff that's on the high spots. So the stuff Steve that's in the grain that. will be staying there. So, hi, Steve. Great show, Steve. Nice bowl. Thank you very much for uh, letting us join you in that. Robert Dolman is just showing so I'm not going to take too much of that off. We'll see what that's Hi, like now. So you can see that the purple is still there in the grain. So there's plenty of uh, room left in the grain for the the uh, the colour. So just to seal that off. Isn't it? Yep. Yeah. It's just a hint rather than colouring it purple. You know, I didn't want to colour it purple. It's an embellishing. So you can still see. Yeah. It's embellishes the, it just embellishes the grain. Yeah, just highlights it a bit and makes it a little bit more special. Daniel's in from Tournage de Bois. Hello, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Morning, Daniel. Nice to see you, buddy. Daniel. Are you just out of bed, Daniel? Must be, I don't know what time it's there. He's Must probably be early in it. the morning where he is. Yeah. <laughs> don't forget, folks, the day's going on all day. The next maker after Brian is going to be Dale from Maple Tree Studios with some awesome scroll work, scroll saw work. And make sure you go over to the YouTube channel, Virtually Crafty, and hit the playlist button, and you won't miss a thing. It'll just automatically move on to each maker as the day progresses. So, so that was Hampshire Sheen High Gloss I've just applied there. And that actually takes a lot bit more of the, the, uh, the embellishing wax off, purely because of the solvents in it. But now we're putting no pressure on this cloth at all. We're just letting the cloth rub gently on the surface of the wood and allowing the wax to develop. The Beard 16 has said, can we start a chant for Brian to hear? Invasion, invasion, invasion. <laughs> Very good uh, idea. Beard, Beard, if you want to do an invasion, son, I'm, I'm uh, entirely up for that. I'll give you a shout. We can do that for, we can easily do that. That's another one, Rich. Well done. 
So there we go. That's the outside completed, guys. As you can see, right. folks, How JP's do time? doing fine, mate. 11.25. Good. JP's just put the link in for the virtuallycrafty.com. Follow the link. And you won't have to think <laughs> about it. Oh, he's a poet and he doesn't know it. Follow the link and you won't have to link. Da, 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 da. Wayne the Woodturn is in. Hi, Wayne. Hello, Wayne. So, um, <coughs> I'm going to start the hollowing process, guys. I'll just change this cam to here. And I'm using um, Jacob's chuck in my tailstock. And I'm going to hollow it to the depth of the flute on this, on this, uh, on this drill bit, which is just a standard 13, well, about 12 and a half mil HSS drill bit. Turn the lathe down to about 500. Mike, you from Illminster. Turn, just on, turn it on, very good thing. Holding on to the chuck Mike. because <coughs> the chuck is kind of loose in the in the quill. That's why you get that little vibration there. And we'll just advance it slowly. Perfect. Heidi from Whitehall Pottery is in, and she's also one of the makers taking part today in the festival. She does some awesome pottery work. Very, very entertaining to watch. Full of knowledge. Very, very skilled. Very artistic. So well, that's as far as my colour go in, so we'll have to withdraw that now and clear the flutes. which I'll do with a brush, because that could be hot. Don't put your finger in there and try and clear that, because it might be hot. And I'll stick a little bit of canuba wax on that drill bit, which is just melting on there, so it is hot. And I need to advance that again now. But I'll need to slide it into the end so that I can get right to the depth I want. Can I just so ask? There. I'm not a wood turner, Brian. Why would you yep. put? Um, why are you putting canuba wax on the drill bit? The canuba wax just lubricates the, the bit a little bit and stops it. Okay. Well, helps to stop the squeaking noise. Ah, got you. Helps the, to stop the, it jamming up as well. And it helps to stop it jamming as well. So that's me all the way down to the bottom of the flutes, which is roughly about four inches deep. Uh, two things. Well, we've also got uh, Robert from Hodgepodge Woodworks. He's also taking part today. Make sure you go along and watch him. Follow, like, and subscribe. And Pete from Twisted Trees is asking, so tell us, Brian, how do you know that the drill bit can be hot? Um, <laughs> let's see, I've learned from others' experience. Somebody's told you, have they? <laughs> Somebody told you, have they? All right, yeah. Yeah, no, could it be my bottom finger? I don't know. <laughs> and Rich says that's a great top tip. So, um, two methods of hollowing this. Oh, there's loads of methods of hollowing. But they, uh, I'm going to show you two today, and I'm going to use this little spindle gouge to begin with. Just a 3-8 spindle gouge. And now I can remove, I'll just remove my tailstock, get it out of the way. <laughs> I just say Steve from SK Crafts who says if anyone is interested, he has a DIY bowl which he has bagged up from today's live. Some assembly may be required. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll turn send the speed it, up. Steve, send it to JP. JP loves getting shaving in yeah. the post. He loves it. And I'm going to use pool cuts to hollow this or to start the hollowing process. Eighty-four watching Brian, and they're just coming up to half past. Ah, oh, thank you. <coughs> thank you so much for coming in, guys. So we've kind of got the flute uh, about uh, ten o'clock, and I'm using the bottom wing just to pull that across. The question has come in that we knew would be answered, would be asked. Steve Cassidy's asking, is that a TV stand holding the extraction hose? That is exactly that. It's actually a desk monitor stand. 
Um, if you if you want to look it up on, uh, I'll, I'll put the link in in the uh, in the description of this video once it gets published by YouTube. But it's a desk monitor stand that you can, I bought from Amazon, and it was about twenty five quid or something. Robert Lapsley's in. Morning, Tony Robert. Hi, Robert. Hi, Robert. So this is one method of hauling using a gouge. Or we could, or we could use what has now become my favourite new tool, and I'm going to use it now if I can find it. I seem to have misplaced it. Mark, have you been in my workshop and stole my tool? Oh, that organisation in these lives. <laughs> oh, that's organisation in my life. Everything was laid out, and I've lost the tool. Oh, it's there it is. On the bench. Right. I found it. I found it. <laughs> it was on the bench behind me, as usual. So this is a Simon Hope mini hollower, six mil cutter, and you'll see the difference. Sidley sixty one saying hi, Sidley. Good morning, Sidley. <laughs> So I suppose this is a carbide cutter, is it? Is this what yep, uh, Jamie is. calls a carbide cutter? Mm. Carbide cupped cutter. It is, aye. So if, you, if you've never seen one before, I'll try and show you that. If it'll focus. Sure. It is actually cupped, and it's an aggressive little beast of a thing. But I have it set. There's a flat on the bottom of this. Show you that there. Flat there. If it sits in the tool rest... This uh, cutter set 45 degrees, or, or sorry, about 30 degrees. So I'm cutting at 30 degrees. And the more you elevate the cutter to horizontal, the more aggressive the cut will be. Yep, that's exactly right, Terry. It's such a small one, but one. it does the job, doesn't it? It's a beast. It, it, it really does shift the, tongue, shift the yeah. timber. And everybody thinks they should get these big cutters and all the rest of it. No, the little tiny six mil does the job more than adequately. Is it a must big is not, set at all? Big is not always beautiful. Sometimes it's too good and it goes through the side, but you know. Well, I, I, I put a little video up last week of, of me doing exactly that. Get a bit that, was a, that was the first time I used it. Daniel from Tonage de Bois asking, what's the effective reach of that tool? Well, I, I'm going to use it down to about four inches here, Daniel. So, obviously, you the, more you have over, the more you have overhanging, the, the less you have here. So, the balance kind of gets out of, out of whack. So, I, I normally go to about four to six inches, no more. You can... Daniel, go down to about nine inches if you have a th th four foot handle on the back. Simon, I hope you extensions to that. Yeah, you could go. put a bigger handle on, yeah. A longer handle would get, would, would, whoops, whoops. Steady. Just got a bit excited with myself there. I opened the cutter up too much. You could also use one of those flat box rests on your tool, tool rest and actually insert the box rest into the piece that you're turning, which would give the tool a bit more support. I have one of those. In. I have one of those, but I don't, really don't like using it. For, uh, uh, the first time we used it, the tool fell off the side and got jammed in. Yeah, they take, take getting used to it. So it, it takes a bit getting used to it, right? I would suggest if you're going to use one of those, try it with something that's a bit wider to start with. <laughs> My head's not in your way there, is it, guy? No, no, no you're fine. Rich, Bit 16 says that looks like a great tool. It's an it's amazing awesome. bit of kit. Comes as a set, it's also got a swan neck uh, version as well. Yeah, if I've got time, I'll show you.
Klondike says you might consider a different grip with your right hand to prevent the tool roll when transitioning from the bottom to the side. Uh, the tool's not rolling so much, it's just... Uh... Yeah, Franco nice. Nichols Kitchen and Workshop has just joined. Good morning, Franco. Hi, Franco. Franco Hello, Franco. Looking forward to your live later on. Absolutely. Andy and Chris. Have a quick look in there and give it a vacuum, mate. It's pretty good. I've got about another half an inch to go down at the bottom. I might actually just turn the speed up a little bit. And start to take much smaller cuts now. So that's me at the depth, at the correct depth now. So I'm just going to tie up the sides. Pete says, you need a bigger handle, Brian. Nick one of mine. I've got loads. <laughs> I will get a bigger handle as soon as I can get postage and stuff sorted out from across the water. Just make sure you don't tell Michelle. Yeah. She's listening. Because we will. Shh. Stop that, you guys. Michelle's in the chat. <laughs> Oops. She might get you on for your birthday. There's something going on in the bottom of this, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. I think there might be a knot or something in Yeah, I'll just show you. Yeah, we're just here. There's a knot going across there, which is that's what's causing that bouncing. Yep, just exactly what it is too. So that we're we're good up the top here. Michelle's put in the chat. Go. Michelle's put in the chat more tools with a sort of <laughs> cranky face kind of. Oh, a cranky emoji. face. Thank you, mm. sort of, mm. kind of face. Mm. Or was it meant to be said, more tools? Cranky, not yeah. likely. Michelle, never. Cranky, never never been known to happen, guys. Never been known to happen. Swap the camera. Swap the camera? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Terry. Thank you, Terry. So I'm just trying to get a nice finishing cut in here now. See, I saw, I saw what Michelle said as more of a request. Like, more tools. You yeah, need more, more tools. 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 More tools. Yes, more tools, Brian. No, more tools. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I read it wrong, said. Brian. I read okay. it wrong. More tools. Lovely. That's what you meant. Happy saying, oh, no. Tools. Says the woman who's got a workshop full of tools. Well, I do say that, but he didn't take any notice. <laughs> 20 to 12, Brian. Good. Eighty four watching. Don't forget, people, if you like what Brian's doing, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe so if you haven't. Now. So I'm quite happy with the, the shape of that now, and that's about, uh, I don't know, I'll measure it for you. 
see how thick the walls are. So the walls are about three mil thick. You can see that? Nice. Yep. Right there somewhere. So Same the other side. Three. Yep. It's about <laughs> three mil thick, all the way down. Nice and straight, that's good. So now we're going to sand this up a bit. <coughs> I'm not putting my fingers in there. So I made this tool yesterday. Just a piece of oak. You can see that, all right? I yep. just put a slit in. I put a little slit in the top. And you just put your piece of paper in here. My hand shaking. My goodness. Mm. I must be nervous. Can't believe that. Halloween. It's the Halloween, is right. It scares a living daylight out of me. We'll just wrap that in. And pop it in there. Turn the speed down a bit. And we'll give that a bit of a stand up. you got to keep the paper moving though, or you'll get radio marks. Beef and Twisted Tree it? says, Look on the bright side, Michelle. The tools mean that you can watch your hubby on screen and you have a mute button. Well, this is true, of course. <laughs> That would not sell it to me. Michelle has a mute button anyway. She just tells me to shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't or, forget, or, folks. Or... If... Sorry. Go ahead, Mark. You're all right. Go ahead. I was going to say, don't forget, folks, if you like what you're seeing, if you like what Brian's doing, hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And hit the notification bell so that tells YouTube that you like what you see and it'll put his content up in front of you whenever he puts something up on his channel. He does regular lives, usually on a Thursday lunchtime. And he also puts out video premieres, usually on a Monday evening. And he also does YouTube shorts. I do indeed. And soon he'll be supplying Spock smocks. When, when, he, Smock, when, he put it yeah. like, when he put it like that, Mark, it sounds like I do a whole lot. Brian is a relatively so new turner. He's only been going a year. But as I said earlier, year. he does do some fantastic work. He's very conscientious about what he does. Always trying to improve something. Um, trying to learn something new every day if I can. Not always possible, of course. Um, one of the best tips I've had so far from, from experienced wood turners, uh, the likes of Terry and Mark and Wayne, um, Martin Savan Smith as well, is the, the need for practice. And the need for practice, not just on turning pieces, you should get some uh, little spindles. If you look under my lathe here, we have got lots of these. We've got about 20 of these, just pieces of pine. And uh, every time I come into the workshop, I pick one up and I'll do... 10 minutes of tool control, just making beads and coves. Yep. Just try, trying to help improve my technique. Jigsy Daniel from uh, the leaf. Go on, Jigsy. Daniel from Tonage de Bar says, Jigsy. Mark, don't forget the amazing jigs that Brian dances. Yes, if we're very lucky, he may actually dance a little jig for us at the end. I don't think of mm -hmm. any dancing today. <laughs> So I'm just doing the rate, the, just at the, uh, the the top inch here, guys, with my finger, because I feel it's still safe enough there. And I want to round this corner off. Jigazi said, said she uh, said it's got to leave. Promise the eldest that it's, um, uh, to take her out on the bike, and she's recently started cycling without stabilizers, and that was really not easy for me to say. Brilliant. <laughs> Well done. Cy Cycling without stabilizers. His eldest is probably 35, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jigsy's 35, is he? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All good. I yeah, I remember that too, when my guy, when my children started to ride their bike. Yeah, so we all remember that. It was a bit of a, it was a, bit of a thrill and all. So that's me down to one or two forty. I think that's two forty. Yep, doesn't need. So a little tip again, guys. If you're going to put a piece of sandpaper into into a cup, make sure you can wrap it around your finger. And if you wrap it around that way, if there's a round edge here, 
it won't catch. So you can see that there's a leading edge here and it's, it's away from the, the piece, just in case there's anything in there that might catch it. My extractor's working extremely well today. So you can't hear my extractor because it's in next door. It's in the, the room next door, which is the wood store. All will be revealed when you do a reveal. Gonna, an 15 minutes to go. Yeah, when I, when, I, when I do an invade. Thanks, Mark. 15 minutes. Oh, panic. Oh, 15 minutes to go. Hold on. Oh, panic. Panic snoring. Don't forget, everyone. There's the link for the virtuallycrafty.com, which will take you to the YouTube well, site. Pretty good like in there now, guys. Like and subscribe for the uh, YouTube site, and also click on the playlist, and that'll take you to each maker as they go live throughout the day, right the way through till Carl Jacobson at the end. This is my other little piece of stick that I have for doing sanding sealer and stuff. So I've just put some sanding sealer in there. Jamie Page is good at making little sticks like that, but he. His face is on his. Yeah, I'm going to put a face in this one now. This is going, this is going to be a Jamie stick. Can I strawberry. draw a strawberry? Strawberry Can I draw stick. a strawberry? Yeah. Strawberry stick. Strawberry. Strawberry page. Strawberry page. I'll just give that little bunlish up in there. Just to help dry it off a little bit. I might have just, I might have just put a little too much sanding sealer in that. <laughs> But it will be absorbed, it'll be fine. We'll put a dry piece of cloth in there now. That might help a bit. <laughs> yeah. I was a little bit heavy handed with the squishing of the bottle. Now, you could finish this if you were going to use this for uh, for live flowers or uh, there's of things are live flower once you've cut it and put it in a vase, I suppose, but you know what I mean, a, a real flower. Um, you could coat the inside with something like um, Rustin's plastic coat, which would make it waterproof then. So that'll do, that's very good. Now, if I was uh, doing this, sorry. Go ahead, Mark. No, sir, I've just put the link in for Dale from Maple Tree Studios Live, Perfect. which follows follows you in 12 minutes. Yep. So make sure on, follow on, go and watch Dale at Maple Tree Studios for some awesome scroll saw work. So now that the uh, I'm finished with the inside, and normally, guys, if I was uh, making these for, for sale or for somebody else, I would take a whole lot more time over sanding the inside and I would polish the inside and everything. But because we've had a little bit of time here and the, the wax on the outside of this is nicely dried up, I'm going to give it a second coat of Hampshire Sheen high gloss just to try and highlight that. Uh, just make it a little bit more shiny. Do you want to go to the and overhead we'll camera, Brian? Oh, yep, yeah, sorry. There you go. And then we'll part it off and we'll be almost done. XB is asking, does Brian have a recent funnel? A recent Thought. funnel? Uh, no. I have a, I have a recent uh, side door evacuation. <laughs> <laughs> Too aggressive with the six mil cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can see on YouTube. I put it up live on YouTube. On, on YouTube. That's one of my shorts. Well, it is my short. The first short I did, so I stuck it up there. It's only a minute to watch, guys. So. Jump on there and have a look. It's a bit of fun. He's well showing your mistakes as well as your good bits. Nobody's perfect. You don't learn from perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. And practice doesn't make perfect. Only pra perfect practice. Only perfect practice makes perfect. Perfect makes permanent. Or practice makes permanent. I'll get this right yet. That's kind of touching that. Yeah, so now we're just going to pop this off, guys. Turn my extractor off a minute. Turn the lathe up to about 700. 
So I'm going to undercut this slightly and then make a relief cut behind it. So I'm just alternating between undercut and relief cut. That's just two, uh, two things. So it sits flat when you put it on a flat surface. It also stops the parting tool from binding up inside the cut. That's it, Mark. Thank you for explaining that. Maybe I should have explained that. Getting lots of nice comments, Brian. Wow. Thank you, Jennifer guys. Says that's gorgeous. Brian says that's a very nice vase. So Scott we're nearly from the there. Daylight Pioneers Workshops in. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Hello, Scott. Hi, Scott. So I've got my hand round the thing, touching the, the tool rest underneath, and off it comes. So two methods you could use to sand this off. Um, we could easily put a sanding arbor into our chuck. But just for speed today, guys, uh, I'll change cameras here, and I'll nip over to my little sander plug in my vacuum on the back end of it. This gets a bit noisy, so the vacuum's going on and the sander's going on. Chris Dodd says he likes your shoes. Those are actually steel toe cap safety shoes. Oh, my red, my little red shoes. People like my red shoes. Yeah, yeah. There we little go. Safety steel shoes. steel toe cap safety shoes. After dropping a piece of wood on my toe, a bit late. Up there, safety up shoes there for thinking. Down there for dancing, and up there for thinking. So time. I'm just gonna just run this. I've got a little bit. Change that camera. Go there. A little bit of 400 grit paper just to take the sharp edge off that now. And now, to finish this off, which I'm not going to do now, I would use sanding sealer on the bottom, then a little bit of wax, and then take it into the house and uh, zap it with my laser to put my maker's mark on it. So, awesome. just quickly clear the lathe a little bit. Rid of that. Pop that board on. Put the right camera on. There. So there's the little vase we've made today. And here's a here's one I made earlier. Just to give you an idea what it's like with flowers in. Put that one to the front. And there's another one that I made earlier. Can you tell he's so, been practicing folks? <laughs> So we like did a little bit of embellishing on this one. Um, we just burnt some lines on the bottom of that one just to see how... It... So the choice is yours. You can do whatever you like, basically. So that's the one from today's live, guys. Beautiful. Well done, Brian. Nice Beautiful. Little, yeah. Nice Beautiful. little piece. Got some great comments, Brian. Awesome. Uh, and there we are, guys. So we've got five minutes left or six minutes left. So... Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm going to bring in my earworms again, just because I like them very much. Um, how do I do that again, Mark? Just because he can. Get the mouse to work, and then now. go to the third one. There we go. And we're all uh, here right. now, guys. So, the gang's all here. So thank you very much, Mark and Joe and Terry, for keeping the chat uh, entertained. I appreciate that. And thanks, all of you, for popping in to see me. Don't forget that this is an all-day event. And Mark's already explained about the link. And, but please support everybody else. Um, and I hope you have a great day. Please so hit the thumbs up on the way out, people. It's goodbye yeah. from them. Goodbye bye bye. from me. Go, goodbye. <laughs> and it's you goodbye from me. Before you <laughs> go, guys, guys. Brian, Brian, oh, Brian, go. You've got to do it. You've got to do a quick check.
Yeah. yeah red, shoe, red shoe shuffle. So are you ready? We'll just do a red little. Red shoe shuffle. I'll go over here. We'll do a little. Red shoe shuffle. Do a little red shoe shuffle. There you go, that bit of Irish dancing. Shuffle dancing. How do you do that shuffle dancing? Lime green smock. There you smock go, guys. Smocks are available from Brian. <laughs> Smocks will be available Are we turning from Brian? Are we turning? <laughs> All right, guys, go get a cup of tea. Get yourselves ready for uh, for the next one. Dale at twelve o'clock. Don't forget Dale. Dale. Dale's next. Maple Studios. Pop over and we'll see you all there. All right, guys. Bye -bye for now. We're we're off. Bye bye, bye, -bye for now.